Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at variables um, and basic data types in C++. So in the previous video we looked at C and it would make sense that if we come in from starting with C that we should just go to C++ first because the two languages are so close and like I've been saying C++ really sort of was intended as a um, improvement upon C and so Eventually, we're going to see the language type sort of digress in a number of ways that depend on what paradigm you decide to pursue while you're inside of C++. And I repeat this multiple times that C++ is a multi-paradigm programming language. And what it basically means is that you can program functions and structs and so on, use a data type. And then you can also do object-oriented programming with um, objects and classes. And then you can do like um, your templatized programming, which is sort of almost sort of unique to C++, but we'll get to that. The, the bottom line is that there are multiple styles of programming in C++. You can kind of combine them or just sort of go one way. Um, but for now, we're just going to focus on the very basic, simple stuff, which is declaring variables. So c since C++ is, you know, essentially C or extension of C, they didn't really change the integral and floating point type, so they are the same. So nothing new really there to, to, to learn in terms of range or anything. Um, and even in terms of how you declare them, um, pretty much looks the same. Um, as you can see, that you still have the same pitfall, which is you can declare a variable. Um, and declare a variable is just saying that you want a variable and allocating space for it and giving a name to it and space in memory. But because you don't give a sign a value at the same time and C and C++ doesn't, doesn't go about and initialize it for you, then you're going to end up with whatever is at that memory location. Um, so that could be something to be aware of. Um, also, you can still go ahead and initialize a variable when you declare it and that's assign it a value. The other thing that's new in C++ is the addition of the auto keyword or really the reuse of the auto keyword from C. Now C has these storage classes that we did not cover because pretty much nobody sort of used them. Only when you do embedded programming, it kind of makes sense to use one or two of them. Bottom line is um, there's a keyword there that was used for the storage class class called auto and C++ reused that keyword to mean something very different than what C was using it for because in C, it really um, wasn't being used that much um, because the default was auto anyway. And so nobody explicitly used to say auto. Um, there's another storage class called register. And that one, if you do embedded programming, you would want to use it to indicate a certain thing. Um, but there's another one called volatile. Um, again, embedded programming, you might want to use it, but we didn't look at it in C. So we're not going to look at it here other than the fact that I mentioned it. All right. So first thing I want to do is jump into our code and I'm going to copy it and make it our C++ code. But before I do that, uh, when we did our C example, we had some warnings that I totally ignore. And um, plus we could simplify some things. So let's simplify, um, uh, get, for, get rid of our warnings. And we don't even need to have all these printouts for all the different ways of printing out one value. Um, I was just trying to make a point in the previous example that when it comes to C, you could pretty much do anything you want. And yeah, it might warn you now, but uh, the compilers are getting better and this sort of thing. But basically, you can print an int as a, um, a unsigned int as a long and all kind of really crazy stuff you can do all without casting it. Of course, you want to get rid of the warning, you can cast it. But what we're going to do is simplify the things that we're printing out. And so let's just um, do that. And I'm going to copy it to my initialization um, function because um, we only have about eight of them now, I think, um, seven of them. And so this is how I simplify it. Um, the other thing we can do is um, when we look at our format specifiers, we're not using them properly in the sense that if I have something that's a long, I'm printing it outside of like an integer um, or a double. So let's just fix all those things. And, and notice the compiler is really good now. Back in the days, it wouldn't show you like this, but it's telling you exactly what format specifiers to use to fix these um, warnings. These are not errors, these are warning. So if we go ahead and sort of address those, um, we can um, now recompile our application 
and we see the only warning that we have is that we're using an unsigned character and a value that's going to overflow or wrap around, right? So um, we can also fix that. And so we can finally have a function in C that compiles and run without any sort of warning. Now we knew that uh, when we assigned 330, it was more than what's supposed to be used in an unsigned character. We just did that on purpose. So, okay, so now let's use that same code as the starting point for our C++ code. And of course we can do the usual thing of, you know, or things I should say of renaming the directory and then of course the file name. And then we can just run it. And notice I run, I call this a CPP file and you can see there that it's actually using this G++ which is the CPP compiler. So the G means GNU, but the GNU++ compiler is supposed to GCC, which is GNU C compiler. And so we know that this has been compiled as a C++ program. Um, we can change this to make it use IO stream, which is sort of the, uh, as we said, when we did uh, hello world in C++, that C++ has its own way of sending out, um, writing standard out and even doing standard in. So you can do it the C way or you can do it the C++ way. So I'm going to fast forward, um, modifying our print statement to use the C++ out. Now, since um, you're not going to be you're using C out. You don't need the format specifiers um, like you do when you use printf. And so we're going to see that in C++, in order to say that something should be printed as X or in fixed notation or scientific notation, you have to use these um, flags. Now, the flags, they come from the standard template um, namespace, STD namespace. And so um, when I included IO stream and then I said using namespace namespace std I, I get C out I get C in I get ENDL all those if I did not say using namespace std I would have to prefix each one of those with the namespace which is std and then that colon colon the scope resolution operator which we mentioned in when we did a hello world example you saw that I didn't use uh, for in there I did not use using namespace for one of my example and I had to use std quote unquote on C out. So same thing here. So scientific fix X, they come from there. The other thing to note is that once you use one of these um, output flag, it stays in effect. So essentially, I don't really need this second scientific if the sec next set of numbers I'm gonna write also need to be scientific. I could take it out and rerun my code and you're gonna see um, both the double value and the long double value are going to be printed in the scientific notation just because I turn it on um, on line 37 there and then print again on 39. So both of them um, get the effect. So as you can see, that's what, so keep that in mind. So when I turn on X, for example, if I use print out some in numbers after that, they'll be printed out as X if I don't reset it. So the other thing you can go back to is default, which is um, not fixed, not scientific, and like not X, for example. Okay, so we see so far that C++ is not wildly different from C. Um, the other thing you can do in C++ is how you initialize variables. And you can make it pretty much initialize variable and make it look like it's a function call on the um, identifier you, you're actually declaring. So if you look at this, you can see it all we're saying, you know, C, and we want to initialize it with 35, but we make it look like we're calling a function. And so, um, and this work. And so that's one of those new things that's different than C that C++ did. So not only it had its own C out and sort of thing, but also how you initialize variables. Finally, there's one other thing um, that um, sort of nice in C++, and I mentioned that up front about reuse of the auto keyword, is now you can just say auto and the identifier, and then once you assign it a value, the C++ is going to assign the appropriate type. Now, notice in line 25 and 26, we want unsigned short and we want unsigned character. So there's no way for us to give that hint unless we add cast our value to those type. And then in which case, there's no point to really say unsigned auto US and then after cast our stuff. We're not talking about casting yet, so that's why I didn't show it. So in this case, it's probably best to just say exactly what you want your identifier or variable to be instead of having C++ try to guess because it would guess incorrectly, or you'd have to make sure that the value you pass is specifically of that type, which means you would have to cast it. 
Okay, and this is no different than in Go when we use var equal and a value. If we use a floating point value, it's gonna be um, float 64 unless we tell it that we want it to be float 32. Or some integer value is gonna be int 32 unless we tell it to be int 16 or something, right? It's trying to do the best it can and try to use the appropriate um, size. Okay, um, notice that you can't use auto on a variable because at that point it doesn't make sense. You know, it auto is only saying, well, I don't need you to tell me the type, I'm gonna derive it. So if you're not assigning a value to that variable, you're not initializing it at a time when you allocate it, well, it doesn't know what it should be. And it's types in C, C++, Java, they're static type, which means, and Go, which means at the time that they declare what you say, what type it is, or even if it, in, it is in forward, that's at compile time. Once it's running, the type cannot change. Hence, auto cannot work um, for variables to say, oh, I'm going to do that at compile time, but when I'm running, I might be able to assign it. That's the sort of thing you can do in Groovy and, um, and Python and maybe Scala. I don't know. I can't remember for sure. Okay. But definitely Java, Go, C, C++, they have static typing. Okay. All right. So um, notice when I try to, when I run my code, I'm getting this warning about how C, um, the auto keyword is a C++ 11 extension. So basically C++ go through some committee and they decided to extend the language or contract it. Um, I don't think they've done any much contraction, but um, essentially there was a C 11, 2011 basically is when that version came out or that standard, and that's when they added auto. So I went through and full wrong with how to had this to the compiler when it's compiling. And so I eventually had to put it in the run configuration settings for um, the code runner plugin, cause that's what we're using. And I took out all the things that I didn't need and I added there on line 40. But when I rerun my code, um, and then I was fooling around with finding other places to put it and it didn't work. But as you can see, even when I added to successfully added to the GC, plus plus um, compiler, it's still giving me the warning. So I'm not sure what it's trying to do by telling me, telling me this warning because it's working, which means it understand that this is an extension and it's enabled, but I don't know why it's working. It's warning. Cause usually in order to get the thing, you'd have to say that all you want to enable that extension, like with this um, command line option here. But I already passed in that and it's not, it's still showing a warning and without it, it's still working. So. I'm not sure what's going on. Anyway, th that's not important to, for what we're doing. I just was trying to get rid of the warning, that's all. But as you can see, it works fine. Um, all right, now again, just like C, declarations can get pretty hairy. Like we have not covered pointer to functions, uh, pointers period, or anything like that. Um, I'll leave that for later. So far, I wanted to keep it simple because I said this is basic variable data types and variable declarations. And so we'll look at the same thing in Go next, and then some of the other languages, of course, after that. Follow me on Twitter at Straversity1. Instagram, it's Straversity. And then I'll see you in the next video where we'll talk about Go. Um, take care. Have a great day. Bye.